Welcome to Engineering Unboxed, where every day is Christmas. Diesels are notorious for putting soot in the engine oil. I'm going to show you a way to get the soot the hell out of there. Hi, I'm Gail Banks. Here's a story you may not know. Back about 1970, we were heavily into the marine engine business. Not diesel, gasoline. Oldsmobile approached us to build an endurance racing engine out of their 455 V8. At the time, there was a guy drag racing Oldsmobiles out here on the coast. In 1969, they hired him to build a boat racing engine. There were lots of pro problems with taking that mid-range design Oldsmobile that loafed its way through its life in a big-ass car and turning it into a racing engine that would run 5,200 RPM up to nine hours straight at, at wide open throttle, which was the Parker nine-hour enduro. Three, two, one. APBA and the National Jet Boat Association both had championship series. They ran in parallel. They couldn't get the engine to live for a 20-minute sprint race. They get, kind of threw up their hands and a magazine guy who knew what we did suggested they come to us, so they came to us. We built a 455 Olds powered jet boat with a jacuzzi jet on it, and the number on the side of the boat was 455. And since we took kind of a laid back approach to doing all this kind of stuff, the boat was named Nice and Easy, driven by Barry Lieberman. Barry Lieberman ran Harden Marine down in Anaheim. We not only won the APBA Jet Boat Championship, we also won the NJBA, National Jet Boat Association Championship. And then we took it to Parker, Arizona for the Parker Nine Hour, and we won our class in the Nine Hour. Shortly after that whole program went down, Oldsmobile decided they wanted to build a diesel engine for use in Oldsmobile cars and also GMC pickup trucks they asked me to come and talk to the guys on the diesel program. And I told them a couple of things. And one of them was, you need more head bolts. You're gonna blow head gaskets because their design was nominally 16 to one compression ratio. You need to do four bolt mains because you're gonna kick the crank in the street. And you need to do a roller tappet camshaft because the soot in the oil destroys the zinc diethylphosphate in the oil package. Zinc diethylphosphate is the extreme pressure lubricant additive that was used at that time. A mo more modern version of zinc diethylphosphate is used right up to today. Those 350s were, were the most notoriously unreliable engines. Much as I hate to say it, the engines blew in every w way I predicted. They had crank problems, they had head gasket problems, and they flattened the cams. The issue here was the Olds 350 diesel destroyed the idea of having a diesel engine in a passenger car. It was so bad that Mercedes-Benz stopped importing diesel cars into the United States for six years because nobody would buy them. The final fix for the whole situation was they discontinued the 350 engine and GM designed a 6.2 liter V8 for use in the 82 pickups, Chevy and GMC. So soot is the enemy of engine oil. E even current diesel engines still produce some soot and it gets into the oil. If you look at my 2019 Ford Mule, in the Ford owner's manual, it gives you the oil change interval. And then it says, if you're doing heavy towing or, or working the truck hard, you should change your oil more often. Why is that? My suspicion is, as the soot builds up in the oil package, when you're working harder, you're, produ you're producing more soot. Some of it goes out and gets trapped in the 
DPF, the diesel particulate filter, and some of it goes past the rings into the oil. That's just how it is. I had a look at the oil the other day in this Ford. It's still the factory fill. It's overdue for changing. And I thought, you know what? Let's have a look at that oil. And lo and behold, there's soot in the damn oil. The problem is that today's conventional oil filters only filter down to about 20 microns. But I've been hearing about bypass filtration systems for 60 years. I've, been, I've never tried one. So I thought, I'm gonna try one on that Ford. So I called up my buddies in Amsoil and I said, you guys make bypass oil filtration systems, right? And they said, yeah, well, what do you need? And I said, I got a 2019 Ford. And they said, one's in the mail today. So I got it. It's a lot of boxes for a bypass oil system. Uh, let's have a look at what we've got here. Engine degreaser. Mudslinger. It actually says mudslinger. Box number two. Somewhere there must be a bypass filtration system. Next item. Ha! Synthetic firearm lubricant. I got a use for that. Synthetic air tool oil. Got a use for that as well. Bypass filtration system. Miracle wash. Is miracle wash something you use for baptisms? <laughs> That's really off color, isn't it? Heavy duty metal protector. Oh my, okay. The last box has what? The box says 10W40 synthetic dirt bike oil, but there's no dirt bike oil in here, but there's an oil analysis pump kit prepaid UPS oil analysis kit. Everything you need to ship the oil sample to the lab is in here, including the sample bottle itself. One of the cautions I'll give you on oil analysis is don't drain it out of the drain plug. You'll get stuff that's kind of precipitated out of the oil and then is laying out on the bottom of the pan. So your sample will get some of that stuff off the bottom of the pan mixed in. That's not representative of what's actually going on in the oil. So a kit that allows you to go down the dipstick tube, which is what this is all about, uh, and pump it out, which is what this is all about. It's kind of a vacuum pump. Uh, and it pumps it right into the bottle, which you thread into this. You attach the sample bottle, and you vacuum some oil out of the engine and fill the sample bottle. Sample kits, boy, we're set up for a while here. We are set up for a while. So this will please my wife. I think this is an Amsoil refrigerator magnet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby. I'm pretty sure these are designed for a toolbox. <laughs> but... When my wife wakes up tomorrow morning, there will be, <laughs> this is going to be great, there'll be three of these on the refrigerator. Uh, I'm sure she's going to com comment. Not that she doesn't back my play, don't get me wrong, but she's real proud of how she keeps the house. Anyhow, I have got Amsoil swag here till hell won't have it.
before we get into the bypass filter, I'd like I'd like to see what they threw in here. Miracle wash, mudslinger. All right, mudslinger. Heavy duty metal protector. So there's the metal protector. Engine degreaser. Out here in California, the guys that are really into their cars are also really into the engine. And they keep the engine super pristine. The whole under, underhood is always show quality with, with most of the guys. This is cool. Got a blown big block Chevy on the cover. I had no idea that Amsoil made all this stuff, but I've got a use for all of it. Time for the bypass oil system. So a bypass oil system takes a small percentage of the engine oil from a high pressure source. It could be at the uh, stock oil filter location. It could be uh, where the oil pressure sensor is located. It varies from application to application. So what do we get in the box here? So it's a two-stage pleated and layered construction, fully synthetic, marine powder-coated shell, and it's 98.7% efficient absolute at two microns per the ISO standard 4548-12. At two microns, the media is so refined in this thing, it could be a diesel fuel filter. Okay, we've got a length of Parker air brake hose. That's pretty cool. So this thing, this stuff has a working pressure of 500 pounds. If you're running 50 to 100 pounds of oil pressure, you got a five to 10 to one over design. A lot of headroom with this stuff. It's not gonna fail. It looks like we've got Here's the source of the oil for the Ford. So this spins on where your oil filter would be. The oil filter spins onto it. An eighth pipe port on the side feeds to the bypass filter. Might as well have a look at this filter while we're at it. I predict this rascal will hold a lot of very fine particles. Now, I haven't read the instructions, but I, 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 th I think I figured this out. This is the return fitting. And I think it replaces the oil cap where you fill the oil. So it's got a ramps machined into it. It twists in and seals just like the stock filler cap does. So the line coming out of the filter goes to, to this. Now there's gotta be an intermediate step here that mounts the filter itself. And I'm pretty sure this is it. Sweet. The oil flow is from the outside through these ports out to the outside of the filter media, through the filter media to the center, and back through this control orifice that controls the flow rate of the oil. And the last thing in the box, other than the instructions, is all the hose fittings and mounting hardware. Now, these hose ends are not just push-ons. These are high-quality industrial uh, Hose ends, swivels, very nice package. There's tie wraps and what appears to be some Loctite. These guys package stuff the way we do. I really like, like this. There's, you, don't, you don't have to go to the hardware store and get tie wraps or whatever else you might need. So how the heck does this whole thing work? Oil is picked up 
out of the oil sump, drawn into the pump, out of the pump to the full flow filter, and out of the filter to the engine bearings, the valve guides, the piston skirts, the wrist pins, all of that, flows by gravity back into the oil sump. A pressure sensor, oil pressure gauge, is tapped into the line from the filter to the engine bearings. That's where you measure engine oil pressure. In the second diagram, the pump is omitted. It would be in the line from the oil pan to the filter. Then out of the center or core of the filter, the oil flows to the camshaft, to the rock arms, to the bearings, and ultimately to the piston skirts and pins as well. And then it just naturally drains back into the sump. The bypass filter takes the filtered high pressure oil, a small amount, in this case, less than 5% of the pump's output. And it flows through this special AMS oil filter and then back into the sump. It's called a bypass system because it bypasses the engine bearings and all the workings of the engine. So this is designed for work truck use. Hot shot, big trailer, camper, whatever you're doing, long mountain grades, you're not buzzing the snot out of the engine like you are in a, in a racing application. The, this I would not use on a racing engine, but boy, it's money for every other use. Let's take a hot shot for example. You've got a hell of an aerodynamic load, even on flat land, you're into the throttle more. With a diesel, that's producing more soot. The more you get into it, working the truck, all these late model trucks, since they started using diesel particulate filters, have been tuned to minimize the soot output in the first place. Tuning that way also helps mileage and engine efficiency. But the diesel particulate filter is still absorbing soot and, and regenerating to burn that soot up so that the filter does not become too restrictive. So there's soot being produced, there's soot getting into the oil. With a setup like this, you can go way beyond the recommended oil change interval. I am convinced that if you intend to keep your truck for any period of time beyond the warranty, this is great insurance. I'm certainly doing it.